Hi everyone, Namaste. This is Benajil and I welcome you all in my YouTube channel. This is a new series, Her Story or Her Story. Most of the time, histories are written with his stories or men's stories and often women's stories are left behind. But it's high time to bring those untold yet very important stories in this current generation. So this show attempts to bring those onto stories of brave women from the past and also from the present who have contributed in Nepal's political, social and entertainment fields. This is the first episode where I'm going to tell you a story of a woman who is also known as the first feminist in Nepal, Yogmaya Nupane. How she became the first feminist, here is her story. Yogmaya was the early women's rights activist, a poet, and a religious leader. She fought against Sati Pratha, a historical Hindu practice in which a widow sacrifices herself by burning with her deceased husband. She fought against gender and caste discrimination in Nepal. Nepal was under the autocratic system of the Rana regime, who ruled for 104 years. Raising a voice against the Ranas was something no one dared because the outcome was either execution or exile. However, she did and left her legacy behind. Yogmaya was born in Nepalitara, Bhoshpur, in the eastern hills of Nepal in 1867. She was married at the age of seven to a boy named Manurat Koirala. Child marriage was a common practice during that time. After a few years of her marriage, her husband Manurath died at the age of 10 and she became a child widow. Yogmaya faced discrimination for being a widow in her society. During that time, widows were taken as a bad omen. As she grew up, she fell in love with the Brahmin boy and got remarried. In those days, a widow getting remarried was against the societal and religious norms. People criticized her for getting remarried. Then she fled to Assam, northern India with her husband. After a decade of her second marriage, it is believed that her husband died. The other source mentioned she separated from her second husband. Later, she married with her lover with the last name Dotel in Assam. The couple had a daughter named Ninakala. But unfortunately, her marriage did not last long. It is believed her husband Dotal also died and she became a widow once again. After a series of unfortunate events, Yogmaya returned to her home in Bhushpur. After that, she took a different path in her life. She handed her daughter to her brother and decided to leave the life of an ascetic. During that time, women living a life of an ascetic was not common. Yogmaya became a religious leader. She started having her followers and disciples. She wrote religious poems. Her poem carried a theme of female and minority rights, which inspired many people at that time. One of her disciples, Bhim Bahadur Basnet, built a heart for her and helped publish her poem in Sikkim. She found the first women's organization called Nari Samiti in 1918. Nari Samiti also played a significant role by lobbying to eradicate Sati Pratha later in 1920. She fought against the political and cultural oppression of women and other minorities under the Rana regime. She courageously criticized the corrupt government and asked for reforms. As her activism grew bigger, she started getting support from the public. The authority considered Yogmaya and her activism a threat to patriarchal privilege. As a result, the government heavily monitored her activities. But Yogmaya continued her activism. She even reached out to the state government. Yogmaya went to Kathmandu, the capital city, to meet the Prime Minister and appealed reforms for women's rights. She handed a 24 points appeal to the Prime Minister detailing the reforms she and her followers wanted to see in the country. Juddha Samser was the Prime Minister and assured Yogmaya to bring those reforms as per her appeal. However, no reforms were made. When she saw no reforms and change, she took a different approach to her activism. Along with her 260 disciples, she got ready to commit mass suicide by self-immolating, but her plan failed. 
The government intervened and dismissed the protest by arresting few protesters and detaining Yogmaya and her disciples. On the night of July 4, 1941, Yogmaya and her 68 disciples consciously committed mass suicide by jumping into the Arun River. It is also known as Jal Samadhi. It is the most prominent mass suicide in the history of Nepal. The Rana government censured the news on Yogmaya and the mass suicide. Prime Minister Chandra Samshi Rana legally abolished Satipratha in 1920 AD. In 2016, the Nepal government issued a postage stamp recognizing her contribution. We can never forget her story and we will always remember Yogmaya for her legacy and inspiration. If you want to learn more about Yogmaya, there is a book written on her. It's called Yogmaya, written by Neelam Karki Niharika. The book also won the Madan Purashkar in 2074. Well, that's all for this episode. I will be back next week with another incredible story of another woman. Until then, you all take care and namaste.